Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode on the Dynamic Lifestyle Podcast. Got Chris right in front of me, looking directly at me. He's trying to multitask, do something on the iPad. I don't know if he's just trying to figure something out or he's trying to ignore me. Real quick guys, what I'm doing is actually putting a timer on this iPad because Eric and I don't shut our mouths. Ooh, <laughs> man, low blow. Ben, that's the truth though. He, yeah, he's not lying. We, we do talk a lot. Once we get going, we just turn into blabbermouths. So we want to keep a cap on this and, and try not to go over on this. So um, yeah, I'm excited about this one. And you know what's funny? I think this is the first solo round that we've done in 2019. Am I right? No, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it too. Yeah, so uh, like got, some, got some good stuff lined up. Um, in this episode today, we're going to be talking about uh, 10 marketing predictions for those that are in the online sphere and those that do coaching most in, most in particular, right? So um, there's a lot of trends going on. I'm not saying that we're going to, that we know all the answers. We're not genies. We can't predict the future, but... Um, We've been around the block for like a decade or so. We are students to the game. We um, are always staying up to date on cutting edge stuff. We go to masterminds, workshops. We've been in masterminds, high level coaches. We coach, you know, fitness coaches how to build their businesses. So I don't know. I, I think that we're going to come up with some good marketing trends or predictions. I think so too. I mean, the thing is, we've been in the industry for 10 years now. So we've yeah. seen a lot of things evolve, right? And things have changed so much these past 10 years. It's insane. It's yeah. changed so fast in a year now. You know what I mean? So you have to keep up on these things, especially these trends and these marketing things that's going on, or you're going to get left behind, right? Or you're going to waste a lot of money. The other thing too is, um, one of our mentors, we were in Ty Lopez's mastermind, yeah. remember? One of the things he said, I remember the, the very first thing he said when we started the mastermind was he said, don't ever be the first or the last person to catch the trend, yeah. right? And, and the reason being, if you're the first person, it hasn't been tested out yet, right? And you're taking that chance of testing it out, you know? And what if, what if that trend doesn't really evolve into something big? And don't be the last person because if you're the last person, you're too slow to the game. You know, you're already left behind. So don't ever be the first or last person when it, when you catch a trend. You know what I mean? So yeah, I no, I mean, that was great. That's a know? great point. So is that kind of like for an example? If I didn't if I didn't catch the trend with like the hashtag of the ten year challenge uh, photo, does that mean that I, I'm left behind? <laughs> I guess so, man. <laughs> oh, no, no but I totally see what you're saying, and uh, absolutely, that's a great point. You know, because trends are always going to evolve, and I mean, yeah, we want to sit there and try to see where the puck's going as much as possible, and we want to try to catch those those trends while early or it's like we're not going to real, really be able to capitalize on them as much as possible so totally makes sense so um and then also too i just want to say before like yeah. put a little bit of context on this um, episode with these 10 predictions that we have um it, it's not like they, these are like empirical like type of evidence where it's like there's studies done on these controlled studies and like this is the research that shows like that these are going to happen right mm -hmm. this is a lot of like anecdotal stuff that like we've seen from 2018 happen and then you see like that trend of what might be happening in 2019 it's been from you know um, colleagues um, you know some of our marketing coaches some of uh you know the masterminds we're in all that type of stuff so i want to put some context on that and just let people know like this isn't stuff we're just coming up of you know from the thin air you know what i yeah. mean like or there's no like real hard research that i know of like to support these trends yeah. but they are pretty good trends i think and i think you guys are gonna get a lot of value out of this i agree okay chris so we got 10 of these so kick it off with numero uno oh, man i'm already like tired about talking <laughs> okay so the first one i want to talk about is many chat and uh, chatbots okay and <clears throat> I think the past couple of years when it came out, you know, a lot of people, again, were just kind of like on the fence and a little bit like they're waiting for other people to try it out, you know, for other people to test some, some money behind it and see like what kind of strategies they can use with that for like lead generation and, and stuff like that. And over the years, I've been kind of keeping my eye on it, you know, just going through people's kind of funnels through their, their Manny chat stuff, their Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think with that, it's going to get a little bit bigger because I think we're seeing it firsthand too, you know, with uh, text message open rates. It's true, right? Uh, uh, people are more likely to open up their their text messages as opposed to like an email. And I think there's yeah. like an eighty percent rate, like where they open it or something like that. So and cold calls are pretty much dead, <clears throat> right? You know, so I, I think with Manny Chat, it's almost like a little like text message. You know what I mean on Facebook Messenger. And I think people are more likely to open that up, you know, as opposed to like an email right now, you know? And I'm not saying email marketing's dead. We'll get into that a little bit later. But <clears throat> I think that you guys should keep an eye on it as well too. And if there's people, 
uh, that you guys look up to in the industry, go through, if they're running many chat bots, go through their little many chat bots. It doesn't mean you have to buy from them or anything like that, but just see what the next steps are and just get some ideas so you guys can just kind of like be ahead of the game and, and understand maybe you guys can use chat bots in your guys' um, online coaching one day. You know so I mean? just kind of go through people's little you know, funnels, little funnels little and see what they're doing, funnels. just get ideas. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I agree. And I've gone through them and they're pretty cool, right? It's like very innovative. Uh, it's like a robot pretty much doing it. And yeah, I, I went through uh, Grant Cardone's yeah, for his- I went, uh, I went through Grant Cardone's and John Lee Dumas's and yeah. they're awesome. I mean, they're, they're very well put together. So, I mean, there's something there. It's just that I think it's still too early just to really say, hey, it's, it's a winner or exactly. a loser, you know? And just to even add to that, I think that Instagram, you know, is going to do something with that as well too, to complement that and have some sort of, you know, bot or something within the, the context of the DMs. Right. I really see that kind of happening too, because it's very congruent to the Facebook Messenger. They've already added the, the audio component to Instagram messages. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so number two um, of our predictions, we think YouTube is going to continue to get bigger, right? I mean, how long do you think YouTube's been around? I, I don't know. Like, I, don't know. I want to say if I had to guess, like a decade or more. Probably, yeah. yeah. So now it's like they have YouTube Live, they have YouTube TV. Yeah. I mean, they have so many different components when it comes to YouTube, right? So it's just like cables going out of you know pretty much business. Um, everyone's attention spans on Netflix, just internet TV, YouTube. So um, it is gonna get bigger, you know? It's just another great way to market. I mean, I see so many people just with their ads like popping up everywhere to where it's, it's kind of annoying, but I get it, you know, it's smart because you wanna constantly, you know, remind these people who you are to know, like, trust you, right? So um, I see what they're doing. So I, I definitely agree that YouTube's a monster. Um, you know, start, you know, if you don't have a YouTube channel right now, I would say start something. Um, it's very difficult because YouTube is like a whole nother, like just business and art itself, right? It's very time consuming because you gotta think about, you know, your themes, your stories, your videos, um, you know, the high production, yeah. the audio, the, the B-roll, the um, video editing, all that crap, right? It's a lot of work. So and you have to be pretty good on camera. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, it, it could be very expensive too, right? To outsource all that stuff. But um, I, I think that you just have to get started on it somehow, right? And just get comfortable in front of a camera, maybe start doing some vlogging, um, a day in the life of what you do, just giving some tips. Again, just intentionally adding value somehow, right? And connecting with these people and just playing the long game with YouTube. I mean, I think that that's just the best way to do it. But if yeah. you have ad money, you have if you have a budget, you know, to sit there and put behind it, then shit, run ads on YouTube. No, exactly. And I think you hit the nail on the head with that. I think um, there's still a lot of opportunity on YouTube because of that reason you said that a lot of people fear it. Oh, and it's because, absolutely. You know, you, you do have to do like long form video. The editing has to be good, the production, the sound, all that stuff, right? Yeah, it's like so, you have to come up with like the next video, right? Like, it's like, how are you gonna, how, how is this video gonna keep being better and better, you know? And like, just like, it's like a channel. It's like people want to tune in to watch like your show. So it's like, how do you keep making it better and better and keeping these viewers there? And most importantly, you know, having them share and everything. Yeah, so yeah, if you're an online coach um, and, and you're kind of hesitating on that, like Eric said, try to figure out a way to get started or get some inspiration by following some other like online uh, yeah. coaches uh, channels and just see what you can come up with. Okay, so the third uh, <coughs> marketing prediction is um, audio and podcasts are gonna get bigger. Right, and we already we're already seeing how, how it's getting bigger with this, right? Like podcasts are going like crazy, like wildfire, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason because um, audio saves time, right? That's something that we all want is time. We want to buy time back. So uh, with with audio, you can multitask a lot, right? You can do a lot of different stuff. Like with YouTube, you have to sit there and be in front of like the computer or in front of your phone, right? You can't sit there and really multitask. Okay. You know, unless you're like on a treadmill or you're doing cardio or like something like that, right? Or somebody's driving. But with audio, you could do all these type of things because you don't have to look at the screen, right? You can listen to it. So you're buying time. And I think also too, yeah. um, you know, with uh, the rise of like Google Home and Alexa and all that type of stuff too, I think there's going to be some opportunities there as like an online coach as well too, where you can do with some stuff like that. You know, still it's still too early for me to predict what you can do with that. But it's something to keep an, an eye on, right? And I think the best way you can do that is maybe just invest in a Google um, Home thing or an Alexa and just play with it. And then I'm sure once you have it there in your home and you're playing with it and using it every day, some light bulbs are gonna kind of spark up to be like, hmm, I can actually like do something business-wise or coaching-wise um, within like this Google Home or Alexa. You know, that's what I think what's gonna go on with the audio and the podcasting and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I agree with all those points and just most importantly, just it's another outlet for people to learn, right? Everybody consumes information a different way. Um, whether it's video, whether it's reading, whether it's audio, I mean, 
you know, or they're, you know, te being taught by a teacher or a coach. So, you know, we all have a different form of learning and, you know, what we, how we retain our information. So audio is huge. And like you said, you can multitask. I mean, it's like a voice in your head. And again, if you're a coach, whether it's a fitness coach or any type of coach out there, it's like, you should have some sort of audio component or build a podcast, you know, based around your, your platform, your brand, most importantly, your personal brand, just because I'm always going to say that it goes back to that no like trust factor. It's like you really have to sit there and get your audience to know, like, and trust you, right? To turn into buyers. I mean, it's just the name of the game. It's like, you know, you have to keep putting in those deposits into people's brains and just, you know, distributing value, 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 and more value, right? So it's like, why not try it in a form of podcasting, right? Why not do like just have someone just splice up your video component and chop it up and just put it into audio, yeah. right? So they have two ways of learning. Exactly. Now I'm excited to share more about like kind of this audio and, and podcasting component like at our workshop that's coming up in a couple of weeks because yeah. we got some good exercises for the attendees to really figure out how they can take advantage of the audio and the podcasting game because I think it's just going to get bigger and bigger. I really do. Yeah, and just see what do you see what we do right with our right. podcast? It's like we we have commercials right that you know are call to actions to our products or our coaching services. So yeah, I could go out there and and seek like sponsors and stuff and get paid for that and stuff, right? But it's like half of those people I don't I'm not you know I, there's no integrity there. I don't really resonate with what I'm trying to sponsor for them. So it's like I'm just going to sit there and do a call to action you know to the listeners to my coaching platform stuff and my products because I do believe in them and I know they work and I have tons of testimonials on it. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So number four with the marketing predictions is AR, augmented reality. All right. Even me saying that, I'm like, shit. You guys should have seen my, scares me. you should have seen my face. Um, we have an iPad here with some notes and it said <laughs> AR and I, my eyes got big. I gave Chris like that, that signal and I was like, what the hell does that mean? Like AR, like I was like, nope. I scooted the iPad to towards him and I was like, you got this one. I was so close to like, to, like saying, shoot, we're gonna have to edit this because I forgot what AR was, right? So yeah, augment, augmented reality. I'm not even scared to say that because it's freaky just thinking about it, right? So augmented reality is like the, the stuff with the, the glasses people are gonna wear, right? Or the things over their eyes to where they can see like almost virtual reality, I think, or right? Or those like those stupid Snapchat glasses. Right, so like I, I, I think guys, like we are still a little bit far away from this, but here's what kind of scared me, okay? And make sure to listen to next week's episode because we interviewed uh, Jay Samet, which he's an expert in innovation and disruption. disruption. And he talked about augmented reality, and me and Eric were like hooked on this because we're like, holy shit! Like, how the heck could this like be like coming like to real life, right? So one of the things I, I selfishly asked him was, you know, because I had my personal trainer goggles on and my online fitness coach goggles on, I was like, how would this affect like a personal trainer with augmented reality? And he said basically, well, he's like, are you an Arnold Schwarzenegger fan? And I was like, well, of course I'm an Arnold Schwarzenegger fan. I, I train at the Mecca. I actually see him sometimes, you know, when he's training. He's like, well, you know what? What if you could go back in his prime and actually train with him with those augmented reality, like virtual reality glasses on? And I was like, whoa, like my brain literally was like, like I just couldn't really picture it or fathom it, you know, because mm -hmm. it's just crazy to think about that, right? So that's what he's predicting is like what you can do with that augmented reality is be somewhere totally else with those goggles on. And I can be here like in LA. If you're like over there in New York, you could be like basically, I guess, trained by Arnold here at the Mecca with those glasses on. I don't know. It's crazy. It's just crazy even talking about this. Um, but just be aware of just the augmented reality stuff. Don't sit there and roll your eyes at it. You know what I mean? Just have your goggles open, just be aware of it. And just, again, just have those like deer headlights out to where it's like, hmm, where do I see the trends going within this, within my online coaching scope of business or specialty? Or even maybe just come up with like a, a list of like problems, right? You know, that you maybe solve, th right? that this could, that you could solve within your coaching business, yeah. you know, that, that might be, you know, congruent with, uh, you know, this augmented right. reality. So yep. always just keep your eyes' lens on and just see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Number five in the 10 marketing predictions. Um, it, this, one's a, this one's a really good one. So really listen to this one. So, uh, number five is retention will be key, mm -hmm. right? So mm. man, yeah, this one, yeah, I, I'm about to drop a, a lot of fire on this Say one. It again. Um, <laughs> Just because um, I, I've, been, I've been telling my coaching students this in our inner circle, how important it is to nurture your clients, nurture your community, nurture your following, right? 
retain, you know, retain, 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 retention, 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 customer service, customer service, going the extra mile. But Eric, it takes too much time uh, and it's just too, uh, it's too much extra over, over the edge like to have to go out of my way and do this. I though. get it, Chris, and some coaches out there are too cool for school. You know, they put themselves on a pedestal. I don't get it. <laughs> on a serious note though, uh, retention is gonna be so key going forward just because, I'll give you the first reason why, just because advertising, is getting very expensive, whether that's through Instagram, whether it's through Facebook, YouTube ads, Google ads, Google AdWords, all that crap. It's getting very expensive to sit there and put, to have an ad budget, and most importantly, acquire a new client, right? So it's getting very expensive. If you have all the money in the world, all the capital to do that, that's amazing, you know? that Then you're ahead of the game, you, you will get eyeballs on you you will probably get new customers, but a lot of us don't have that type of money to invest in ads, right? So we have to retain our clients. We really, really do. We have to sit there and go the extra mile. We have to sit there and put them in a position to succeed. We have to get them you know, results. We have to get testimonials. We have to ask them for referrals. Um, you know, That's how we're gonna really sit there and, and, and keep our businesses up to par, right? And mostly scale them. So again, um, really take that into consideration with this number five to where you have to sit there and really retain your clients and i'm just talking go the extra mile get on a phone call with them you know just check in with them text them you know the more touch points and more communication going forward is going to be better in my opinion and those that aren't doing that i'm sorry you're, you're gonna you're gonna fail and there's going to be other coaches out there that are going to offer that personal touch and, and go the extra mile to build that relationship to where these people are gonna stay on with them, invest their money, and most importantly, they're gonna rave about you, share your stuff on social media, and refer people. The easiest way to get a new customer, right? Referrals. Yeah, 100%, I really have nothing to add to that. Okay, so number six on our marketing predictions is Instagram will continue to rise. And as you guys have seen, Instagram is already a monster, right? It's almost taken over like Facebook, I, I think just because there's five neighborhoods within this. And one of our um, social media coaches, specifically Instagram, Sue B. Zimmerman um, actually taught us this. There's five neighborhoods within Instagram, right? So you have Facebook or Instagram Live, you have Instagram Stories, Instagram Standalone Posts, you have Instagram Highlights, and then you have um, Direct Messages. So five neighborhoods right there within Instagram. And now you have Instagram TV. Yeah. Forgot about that too, <laughs> Jesus. So, it's a monster, right? It's a monster of, of ways to sit there and, and distribute distribute content on Instagram. It's taking over the world. It is. So you have to really be able to understand how to utilize Instagram. You know, you have to understand content distribution, content strategy. Um, and also, you know, since you're an online coach, you have to know how to talk to people in the DM, yeah. right? Because it's a really, really is another form of sales like uh, process within the DM. And if you don't understand that, you have to start understanding that and figuring that out because there is a lot of stuff that's going to be going on in Instagram going forward. And like you said, maybe the chatbot thing, something's going to be going on with that within Instagram. Absolutely. And yeah. I know Instagram's going to start running um, more like type of um, ads towards I think like, well, they're already doing stories, right? It's, it's already there where you yeah. can see that the, the algorithm, like to where it's like, yeah. you're not getting as much engagement. You're not getting mu right. that much eyeballs on your, your standalone posts and stuff to where it's like, yeah, it just, they're, they're going that direction to where it's like, you're, you're gonna have to pay to play, you yeah. know, to get more eyeballs on you. And just to add to your point with the, the direct messages, um, I wanna give the, the listeners a nice little, just kind of like, you know, actionable step to do going forward. So guys, um, if you have a pen and paper out, just write this down to where, if you are getting a brand new follower, right? If you get followers on your guys' uh, Instagram, literally take, you know, one minute. This will take you one minute to, you know, copy and paste into the DM and just send them a direct message saying, thank you by their first name. Put their first name in there because it makes it more personable. Say thank you name for following me and supporting me. I appreciate you. Anything I could do to help support you and your vision going forward, mm -hmm please let me know. There's that one first touch point, right? After that, they will either respond and say thank you or they'll just be a dick and not even respond. And that's fine, but you're going the extra mile, you're being the bigger person, trying to spark up that conversation. And hey, that might turn into a lead, that might turn into a conversation that goes to email, to a, a phone call, text message, right. Skype, Zoom. So really take it into consideration, put that into action because that's where things are going. They really are, so Instagram is a monster. Yep. Okay, number seven is Facebook. Die is dying out. So 
this kind of will go congruent with what I was talking about at number five, where ads are getting very expensive, right? Uh, to just promote on Facebook. It's it's very, very expensive. It's, it's ridiculous. A, it's a pay to play game. Yeah, it is. Facebook. It is. And you see it with like, you know, having like a business page and stuff where if you post something, it's like there's no there's no point unless you boost it, right? Because it gets no organic or kind of reach. Actually. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's just where it's going with Facebook. I mean, I'm not saying Facebook is it's not dead, you know, it's still great to have a presence on there, post content, um, Facebook groups, but again, Facebook groups are dying out too. Just there's not a lot of people active on them. Most people's attention is on Instagram. Let's let's yeah. get real here. Yeah. So that's where I see that trend going, right? It's just that I don't think Facebook is gonna get sexier. I really don't, unless Mr. Zuckerberg comes up with some something fancy, something very caliente to where people are going to be like, man, I got to ditch Instagram and go back to Facebook. Yeah, I think what, what you can do with Facebook um, as an online coach is, number one, you ha you should you should definitely have a fan page, right? Mm -hmm. And that's to eventually run ads to like a product or a service that you eventually have. Or if you have content, you can do like, you know, basically KLT type of posts, right? right. Like trust and just give some value with no call to action. Always do that, right? It's not going to be too expensive because you're not trying to acquire a customer, right? You're not trying to register somebody for like a webinar. The second thing is definitely have like a Facebook group, you know, for your um, your coaching clients to right. be able to collaborate. You can post some good stuff in there because everybody's pretty much on Facebook. The third thing is just use your your profile as almost like branding, right? So you could always post pictures of like your lifestyle, what you're doing, what you kind of stand by. Mm -hmm. Do some do some Facebook lives sometimes. Do some videos on there because that's a way to kind of build up your like personal brand like on Facebook profile too because the algorithm. You don't have to really pay to really be on your profile for Facebook, right? If you right. have a lot of friends on there, they're oh, yeah. see most of that stuff. There still is an algorithm. Absolutely. Still stuff that Facebook doesn't like, but your chances are better, you know, without having to pay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. there's some stuff you guys can do on Facebook. It's yeah. a little bit tricky. You That's know, good point. And I just think, like Eric said, Instagram is just taking over. Yeah. All right. So. Which one we got? Number eight. Numero ocho. Ooh, moving fast. Calle ocho. <laughs> Pitbull. LinkedIn will have more of a role. So if you guys haven't been using LinkedIn, we use LinkedIn this past year quite a bit. Yeah. We really kind of beefed ours up, you know, with a, a nice banner. But so kudos they, to them too, because they've stepped up their game too. Yeah, they have. Yeah. Uh, they really have. You know, they, they have different features in there where you can pay like for different like uh, levels within it. But, yeah. you know, just have a regular just LinkedIn profile and just make sure you have a nice banner. Make sure like all of the um, the copy on there is, is, is nice. The messaging is really good. So people really know what you do like within your profession. But it's good because if you're a coach, I think it's it, it's suitable for you wanting those higher ticket type of uh, coaching clients and collaborations because people want to see that you're actually legit, you're credible. You're not just some person posting on Instagram saying, oh, DM me and hire me as a coach. You know what I mean? Like you're legit. Like you have a track record within like your, your LinkedIn, the credibility's there, the authority's there. Yep. Um, you know, and I think that's a really good way to attract high ticket, um, you know, coaching clients and have collaborations and, and JVs and stuff like that too. And then one more thing too, within LinkedIn is there's this cool plugin called Duck Soup. So it's like D U X and then Soup S O U P. And we, we were playing around with that like too. actual duck soup, duck like soup. A, a soup full of ducks. Yeah, I've never tried duck soup, <laughs> but uh, yeah, duck soup. My right? cheesy it's humor. It's a plugin um, to like Chrome or whatever web browser you use, and what they do is. They kind of sit there and, um, you know, if you're, say you're in the fitness industry and you're looking to collaborate with nothing but personal trainers uh, in Los Angeles, they'll sit there and filter out that search to where you're only going to be connecting with personal trainers in Los Angeles. And this way you connect with them on the first touch point yeah. and it actually automatically leaves them like a message like, hey, this is Chris. Thank you so much for connecting with me. If there's anything I can do for you, it does all that kind of legwork for you and opens up the conversation. So then after that, you can kind of just sit there and get on the phone with somebody, see if you can add value, see if they can add value to you. So it's a really cool um, you know, software tool within um, LinkedIn. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with LinkedIn. So um, yeah, I think that's still gonna be up and coming and they just added a video. They, you can post videos on there too now. So yeah, it's a it's just another way to just post content and get people to know, like, trust you. Yeah, and just check that. ours out on LinkedIn, Chris and Eric Martinez, so you guys can kind of model that and get some good ideas off of that because yeah. we've really put in the time to uh, beef that up. Absolutely. Okay, number nine in the 10 marketing predictions for um, online coaching is email marketing is not dead, right? Um, it's just not. And I've been saying this for a, a long, long time. I teach this to my inner circle students, the importance of, you know, collecting emails, building a list, again, thinking bigger picture, playing the long game. 
because again, you know, social media is great. We've taught this at numerous workshops about why email, you know, marketing and platforms are so big. Right. So what we always say is that your email list is your email list. You own that, right? Those are your, you know, subscribers, people that are potential, you know, buyers going forward. It's a small community. Social media is rented land. Any day now, that could be shut off, changed to where it affects us, and boom, there goes our our following, our whatever, our support, our supporters, whatever you like to you know you know use to in terms of you know your your audience. But you don't own social media, you know you don't you can't control that. You can control your email list because you've built that up and you've done a good job with like lead magnets, you know, collecting emails, giving good value, nurturing that community. So again, email marketing is not dead. So I really encourage you guys to you know. <laughs> try to build some sort of email platform and even start with a basic one like um, MailChimp, right? MailChimp gives you the first, you know, 2,000 subscribers, you know, free. And you guys just have to sit there and build that community of just putting out value and content that you don't post on social media, right? And just create a cool little lead magnet, right? That That's kind of like a... a an incentive for you know that person to give you their email right because a lot of people aren't going to exchange emails just for you know you asking for it they, they want something in return so come up with a cool little gift uh, videos PDF cheat sheets um, grocery list whatever you want to do and just collect emails and keep building it slowly because when you have those emails you can sit there and turn those people into buyers going forward. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. can't do that on social media you can't sit there and put out a bunch of just like you can't do a product launch on there you can't you can't sell, sell, sell on your social media because it's like, that's your organic following. And they're gonna sit there and be like, what the hell are you doing, man? Like, you're just trying to sell us, you know? So you can't do that. But on an email platform, you can do that because that's expected there. Yeah, so two things with this email marketing. I'll say the first thing, like you touched a little bit on this with the rented land thing. Um, that's the thing you see these big influencers make mistakes on, right? Mm -hmm. They have like thousands and thousands or millions of followers yeah. and they have no email list. Yeah, no, it doesn't like, mean are shit. You, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. You don't have an email list? Does you have all those followers and millions of followers? It doesn't mean anything. Like what the heck would you do if Instagram was gone? Yeah. Like what would you do? Yeah. I, I've been saying this for a anything. long time. So it's crazy. Don't do not do that, number one, okay? And then, then secondly, I think people too just with email marketing, they don't they don't really know how to, to use email marketing, no. right? And that's why we invested in, um, you know, somebody helping us with our email marketing, yep. right? Because we didn't really know how to use it, and that's why we hired like an email marketing coach we're working with right now. And he's showing us a lot of good stuff. And Learned a lot. We'll give you guys a couple like nuggets from this, but you have to keep the conversation going within email marketing. Like if you're almost having a conversation with somebody at a coffee shop, yep. you know, people want to know like what you do in your lifestyle. They want to keep up like what what you're actually doing as a person, a human being, right? And then secondly, too, um, you know, with the email, um, you know, marketing, just <clears throat> subscribe to other people's email list. Yeah. You know what I mean? And go through their funnels and see what their lead magnets are and just see, like, how they give value. And if they, if they do a call to action, if they sell you, if they do a soft sell, if they do, like, a hard sell. You know what yeah. I mean? So just go through it. Be a student through other people's funnels and email uh, list. Yeah, you can learn a lot through that. Okay. Number 10, the final one. I think we're doing pretty good on time here, too. I just checked it. Um, that was a 29, 2019 resolution. <laughs> is uh, JVs and alliances, right? So JVs is yeah. joint ventures. So you can just look at this as collaborations um, in building alliances with other people in your industry, right? So for instance, um, you know, for us, like we're, we're in the fitness business, you know, industry and fitness industry, you know, so... We might be looking for you know coaches to kind of team up with that to have like different lists or something like that or we might be looking for somebody you know so so say for instance for example like we're in the fitness business industry right we're helping uh, personal trainers and fitness enthusiasts go online mm -hmm. or gym owners grow their um, online presence um, or um, you know their coaching business right yeah. their online coaching business maybe we can team up with somebody that um, does sales funnels or does uh, you know, um, social media marketing, you know what I mean? Like a, a marketing team or something like that. So yeah. then we add that on as an alliance and build a big team so that we can help out that gym owner. We do what we do best and then they do what they do best. Absolutely. You know I mean? Or even just to add that, you cross promote each other's services, exactly. right? So, you know, it's like, let's say you have somebody that you know that you can't serve them, right? You know, you don't want to sit there and just take their money for the sake of taking money because there's a lot of assholes that do that these days out there. But it's like, hey, you know, have some humility and be like, look, this is my great colleague, my great friend, what's his name? He is amazing at building sales funnels. He's amazing at building landing pages, websites, videographer. 
I want to introduce you to him, right? So then you're, you're bringing that person business and vice versa. That person will be like, man, I know these two twins with humongous eyebrows. <laughs> they are great coaches. They really go the extra mile and put their, their clients in a position to succeed, right? So you're cross promoting. So come out the list to cross promote certain people. Yeah, exactly. And then another thing too, like with your online coaching, if you know, you're know you selling <clears throat> something through like webinars or a live event yeah. or something like that, you can build you know an affiliate like team. Right, so yep. that they can sit there and have an affiliate code or affiliate link, and they go out there and promote your product or services, and they get they get they earn some money as well too. But you're getting out uh, to their list and other people that they know that you don't have, really have access to. Yeah. Right, so there's a lot of opportunities with JVs, alliances, affiliates, collaborations. You yeah, know what I mean? and it's just forward. it comes down to just putting your ego down, having humility, and understanding that they're not competition you know they're, they're only going to help you people are only going to help you okay um so that's the 10 marketing strategy or marketing predictions that we have i want to give you guys one quick bonus one because i'm a nice guy i where i see the prediction going with this and i this is one thing we do right we we really hammer this home to our inner circle clients and we have them do this exercise when they always do coaching days with us and that's you know really putting together their usp right their unique selling proposition so again we're in that society in that era where we don't have time to sit there and, and really just be like who are you you know what can you do for me right it's just like we don't have time to do all that you know our attention spans are just really really short so it's like people want to just we want you to get to the fucking point all right they want to know who you are what do you do and why should i care most importantly right so if you guys could really understand that, that one more time so that they understand yeah that. who who are you what do you do and why should I care? You know, mm -hmm. why should I care? What's your credibility? What are you going to do to, you know, make my life easier? What problem are you going to solve for me? Right? Mm -hmm. So understand that having that unique selling proposition is so powerful. So get that down, really get that down. Just, you know, do a brain dump on it. Just say, you know, I help people blank, 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 buy blank, 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 right? What is your unique angle? to your coaching business and style that is different from everybody else to where they're going to be like, wow, yep, you're the go-to coach that I need. This is, this is, this is totally different from anybody else, what everybody else offers. So that's my last prediction is just the USP um, is just going to be powerful because at the end of the day, people just, a lot of people don't give two shits, right? They just want to know who you are and, and, and why should I care about you? Yeah. That's it. I think the last prediction I have too for 2019 is Eric's going to shave his head and one of his eyebrows. <laughs> Better have a big bet going on to do that. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it, guys. The, yeah. our, our 10 marketing predictions for um, online coaches in 2019. Um, we hope that this was valuable for you guys. Yep. Uh, we were really excited about talking about this because we like talking about this type of stuff. Um, and I know a lot of people aren't really educated or keep up on this type of stuff, but we felt like these are the 10 best um, marketing predictions for an online coach to really, really keep up on. So make sure you guys are just constantly being students, asking questions, doing your guys' homework, um, have humility, right? And uh, just keep going forward, keep moving the needle forward every single day. Yeah, and if you guys know of any other predictions that you guys have, please share it with us, right? So connect with us on Instagram, um, just reply back to us, uh, email us, all that stuff. So again, guys, uh, you know, thank you so much again for tuning in. Uh, much love, uh, 2019. Um, it's gonna be a big one. This is the first solo round done. And I think we're gonna do a lot more going forward. So stay tuned. And if you found value in this and you think that this could help somebody else out, please do us a favor and share this or even leave a rating and review on this particular show. We'd uh, really, really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Peace. All right, guys. So next time, go out there and live a dynamic lifestyle. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching this podcast video. If you guys are interested in learning how to build your online fitness business, we have two free videos for you guys. The first video is how to build your online fitness business and make more money. And the second one is how to retain your actual online clients so you can sustain your online business. So make sure to click the link in the description box below and access those two videos and wait for the next podcast that comes on.